Okay, so for our second talk here, we've got Jan Anderson from Frontgate Geisler talking about their null processor line. All right, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm um, again Jan, um, Director of Engineering in Frontgate Geisler. Uh, we're a Swedish company based in uh, Gothenburg. So I will talk to you about our Noel uh, processor line today, uh, starting out with the Noel 5 uh, processor model. It's something that we have developed in house. It's a RISC V model that it implement at implementation time you configure to be an RV32 or RV64 uh, architecture. It's a superscaler in order pipeline. We can issue two, up to two instructions per clock cycle. And uh, I would say that what sets us apart from uh, other vendors is that we uh, have a certain heritage when it comes to implementing fault-tolerant computer systems. So the Noel 5 has an advanced protection of the uh, L1 cache. Also, when it comes to the open source aspects, uh, the Noel 5 being the superscalar dual issue core is quite feature complete when it comes to implement different dif risk 5 extensions. So most other vendors that have a commercial offering uh, open source their lowest grade of processors, while we open source everything except for the fault tolerance features and uh, also our most complex uh, floating point units. Um, we have a few uh, different example configurations. Uh, we have uh, an extensive set of uh, VHDL generics that you could tune to um, adapt the Noel 5 to a specific target. Um, and um, with all those permutations comes a certain verification effort. So we have defined a few s what we call standard configurations, uh, so where we also provide software tool chains. And I think the, mo the most interesting ones for the Noel 5 are the HP and GP uh, configurations. That's where you get the best PPA characteristics. So the, the target was really to have a uh, higher end uh, core in this case while still preserving uh, an in-order pipeline. Um, some additional details where I will not go into all of them, but uh, th this is an overview of some of the extensions uh, that the processor implements and that you can configure at uh, implementation time. So by downloading this, you, you can implement an RV64 GCH core, uh, which allows you to run Linux unmodified uh, as a guest operating system under a, under a hypervisor. Uh, we have also quite recently added support for the clo control flow integrity extensions. Those have been just been recently uh, ratified, so that's about to, re to be released. Uh, our E-Trace codec is also something that is about to be released, and this is then available both in our commercial offering and in our uh, copyleft open source variant of, of our uh, IP library. Um, when it comes to peripherals around the, the Noel 5, we uh, implement and conform to the RISC V debug specifications. For interrupt controllers, we have the, we've implemented the classical specifications. We also support uh, advanced interrupt architecture. Uh, and next to that, we, we provide memory controllers. The, the most advanced thing we have is a DDR2, 3, and 4 controller with a very strong error correcting code because we primarily target space applications. Uh, we have two different versions of uh, level two cache, uh, one which is also open source. And uh, a recent addition that we've made is um, uh, a bridge where we implement IOPMP and also RISC-V IOMMU functionality. So the type of systems that you can build with the Noel 5 and uh, our other IP is uh, one representation is this one that I mentioned in my lightning talk yesterday. Uh, this is the fifth generation European space grade microprocessor. So it's an implementation that we do the, on a radiation hardened technology. We also have fault tolerance features. And in this one, we have an octa core uh, Leon 5 system, a NOL 5 system. Um, one feature that has, uh, the, the one thing that we have done for the GR765 is uh, an extension of the uh, interconnect. So we still implement uh, AMBA2 buses, but in order to allow multi-core scaling, we, uh, we have uh, gone to several ports on both the processors and the level two cache. And this allows us to uh, improve uh, average performance simply by, uh, by increasing uh, memory bandwidth. 
Uh, and we implement this in a Stripe configuration. So when you uh, access a cache line and then go to access the next cache line, you typically go to, to the next Stripe. But this is also a configurable feature. And by to toying with this quite simple solution, we can create systems where we tie different groups of processors to, to use different bus uh, layers. And uh, since we also have these ports tied to, um, uh, to four different level two caches, we can use this to actually create a system which is completely hardware isolated. There is no interference between the processor cores when uh, doing memory accesses. And in the industries that we primarily target, this is a big deal, because in multi-core systems, you typically save money by taking different CPUs and integrating software functions on one of them. But then you run into a situation where these different software instances will start to interfere with each other. And if you change one of them, you have to revalidate all of them. And this is a hardware feature that we're adding to save on that uh, engineering time. Then we can go beyond that uh, by also introducing uh, a mode in the, uh, in the memory controller so that we actually have a time-slotted mode to external memory. So even without replicating external memory, we still have shared control signals going to external DRAM. Uh, we are able to have an isolated mode w with quite little performance uh, impact going all the way out to external memory chips. The, the abstract for, um, that we submitted for, uh, for this session uh, told me that uh, we said that we would talk about the um, Leon line of uh, processors. So this is an uh, advanced look at uh, the next processor model that we're going to add uh, to, to the NOEL collection. So in collaboration with the European Space Agency, we are implementing a simpler processor core compared to the NOEL 5. Uh, and this is uh, an RV32 uh, implementation where we have selected to implement a barrel processor, which in turn makes us quite dependent on tight, tightly coupled memory to um, uh, fe feeding uh, all of the threads that we will have running on this. And it will have three to seven pipeline stages, and that will also uh, the number of pipeline stages will also mean that what software sees is the corresponding number of hearts. So in each different pipeline stage, one thread will be active. Uh, the reason why we are doing this is that we have a need for a more resource efficient processor for, for some uh, uh, FPGA implementations, for, exam for example. And it's also a way to achieve deterministic operation. And by choosing a bar barrel architecture, we can avoid data forwarding uh, in the design, which sig significantly decreases the need for uh, verification, or it lowers the verification effort. And uh, that also opens up uh, ways to allow certifiable uh, implementations of this core. So right now, we have a RTL model created where we've done some architectural exploration. And we are moving towards the, the first release of this in Q1 of 2025. And it will also be available, I expect, as, a, as part of the ESA uh, IP core portfolio. When it comes to the software side, uh, we've ha we have a ha legacy of providing our Leon line of processors that implement the Spark architecture. And uh, the, the software ecosystem that comes from us in that case uh, looks like this. We have a number of different operating systems, tool chains, partner software, and so on. And our goal is also to provide this for our RISC-V architectures to allow users to basically, on, if you have a user land application, you should be able to move between the different architectures seamlessly. And today, what we provide toolchains for are VxWorks, Linux, Artems, and BRC, to, uh, and also Zephyr. So that's uh, toolchains that you can grab from our website. And we also have a, a, a debug monitor uh, that is uh, suitable for use with our IP cores. But for NOEL file systems, you can also use any, any debugger that supports the RISC-V debug specification. Finally, this is integrated in the GRLib IP library. So the offering is 
perhaps similar to what uh, the, the low risk people just uh, presented. We have more peripherals, but our IP course in the free open source version comes with a copyleft license instead of a solder pad license. So I would invite you, if you're interested in this, to try out Novel 5. Uh, we have it available as ready-made bitstreams. The source code is available. We provide a free version, as in beer, of the debug software. And we also have software tool chains uh, available online. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any questions from anyone? Thank you. Uh, my question is regarding the fault tolerance implementation. You mentioned that the memory as well as the register files are protected using ECC. How about the data path and the pipeline? It's well known that those parts of the processor are very uh, susceptible to soft errors. So are they protected? And if yes, how? It depends on the implementation technology. If we look at this, who, that will be this architecture will be implemented on uh, ST Microelectronics 28 nanometer, so that's an ASIC implementation. So, in addition to the um, RTL level features where we protect external memories and, and on chip memories because th those are very susceptible to radiation effects. Uh, the, the rest of the system, uh, in this case, is hardened by radiation-hardened cells. So we use flip-flops and the combinational logic that, that's hardened against radiation effects. Um, I, kn I know that there is a lot of research and also a push from vendors in, in uh, having uh, parity next to buses. Uh, you can use other things like uh, if you have a big multiplier, you can use residual codes to check the results. But we have done radiation tests on this technology, and we, we, don't, we aren't susceptible to single event transients, which would warrant that type of thing. So we rely on hardened cells instead. If you would go to an FPGA, then the, the situation is different, where you want to do distributed TMR, which is very costly, uh, but perhaps a block-level TMR instead. So, it's a long answer because it's a really tricky topic. But I can say that our approach has, for the last three decades, been that we don't do lockstep. We don't do uh, higher level uh, comparison between the CPUs because that typically means a longer restart time. And we want to continue operating transparently in the presence of faults, essentially. Yeah. Any other questions for Jan? Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you.